Back to another edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, football camp begins today. Uh, the first practice of the 2023 fall camp begin is this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely want to discuss some of that. We have some basketball news <clears throat> items to hit on as well. But let's just go right off the top. Football camp kicks off. What do you? What are? Ooh. Obviously, there's not going to be a ton of things you can report on. We all know the the no, rules no. under Shiano. <laughs> but personally, what are like? Let's just go with what are the three things you're looking forward to most to see this training camp about this football team? I'd say quarterback play is the obvious one, and that's that's always going to be number one for the most part because they really haven't had consistent quarterback play since. <laughs> Gary Nova, Nova, I guess. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, almost. They had like too. a year of Gear, of Labiano that was decent, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, basically Nova. Yeah, those numbers actually weren't that bad. I, I looked back at the Laviano ones, but uh, yeah, since Gary Nova, so I'm eager to see how Gavin looks because he's a solidified starter now. He doesn't have to go through all the battle for the next three to four weeks. Um, well, just see how he's progressing overall. I mean, you got a new um new OC in charge now too, and Kirk Shiraka. See what he's done with him over spring and. I guess over summer as well. They don't really get to do much during the summer. So this will be um, interesting to see just how they look in general. And if <clears throat> my question is, if, if Evan Simon does look better in camp, like, what do you do? <laughs> I don't think you can – if you name a starter at Big Ten Media Day, unless he gets hurt, you have to go with him game one. There's, I really see no outs there. Yeah, no. I mean, I totally agree, but, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a weird situation if he does because in the past we've seen Evan Simon look really good in practice and in games too. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, but uh, I think just kind of watching Gavin and see how he goes through progressions. It's day one, so they're not going to do a whole lot, but it definitely uh, will be interesting to see. And then I, I'd probably say number two is this wide receiver court because it's really dependent on – this offense is dependent on two things, three things if you count the O-line, and it's quarterback play and wide receiver play. A whole new group of skill position guys, a tight end, that wide receiver – between Sean Bauman, between Jaquay Jackson, Nassim Brantley, Chris Long this spring. So just to see those guys out there again and see what they look like and some of the newcomers too, to see like, is Jaquay Jackson really that good as a D2 guy going up, to, <laughs> making a huge leap? Nassim yeah. Brantley is making a big leap from Western Illinois to the Big Ten level. And Chris Long, who's, who's shown flashes, is, is he going to be able to make that next leap and make it into a, a breakout player, I guess, this season? And then uh, I'd say the third and final thing would probably be the – this was a tough one because you can go a different, couple different routes. Some people were probably going to be like, I want to see Flaherty and see how he does with the O-line. But kind of saw that in spring. We've, that's already kind of solidified. I'm, I'm more interested in the defensive backs because you got a weird mesh of guys. you got some youngsters stepping up and Thomas Amonkwa. you got some new transfers and Eric Rogers and Charles Amonkwa, Michael Dixon. And then you got some middle, not, I wouldn't call them veterans, but I wouldn't call them rookies either, or freshmen. Mm -hmm. And Igbenosin, uh, Max Melton's a veteran. Longer has been here for a couple of years. Kasson Abrams has been pretty solid. So it's a nice mixture of guys from all different levels and all different classes. So it's kind of intriguing to see what that unit can do this season. Yeah, definitely, because they seemingly added a ton of guys when <clears throat> I personally thought they had good depth, but I'll trust Shiano's opinions on defensive backs for sure. Um, because, I mean, they could go – like safety might be a little bit softer, but corner we we can go five deep at corner this year. Uh, yeah, easily. And that's the cool thing is that you can kind of mix and match guys. Longer beam can play a little bit more nickel. Um, Dixon can play back as a safety. Could play up in that Izzy in linebacker role. Could even line up as linebacker at times, I guess, as a third linebacker because they more than likely are still going to run that four two five for the most part. A um, bunch of different mixtures and a bunch of different uh, combos you can go with. So Harris Simiak, um and Shiano kind of have their their work cut out for him. Yeah, I know. I know that Flip Dixon wasn't like a super big fan of playing that like uh, that hybrid role at Minnesota, but he was good at it. So I do wonder if they're going to play him in a similar role like that in Rutgers defense this this upcoming season. I would expect it to. Maybe not like a full fledged linebacker role, but like. You're good at what you do, and if you show them tape of what Izian did, and Izian's now making yeah. some really big moves at uh, Tampa Bay now. Yep. Um, and people are hyping him up. Antoine Winfield Jr. was hyping him up on Twitter the other day. Yep. And he's he's a pretty pretty damn good uh, defensive back too. Yep. Uh, in his own right, so just uh, kind of show him that tape and just be like, hey, dude, like we got him to the league pretty easily. And no offense, but he's five foot nine. If 
you look yeah, at you. Yeah. We can get you yeah. to the league He's even easier. So mm-hmm. I think you show them that tape and kind of just put that uh, put that out there and be like, hey, this is your role. You're good at it. There's a future for you in it, and you can make a couple million dollars in the NFL. Yep. No, it's a, it's a fun it's a fun camp to kind of kind of speculate things uh, mm-hmm. because there's so many new new bodies, so many guys expected to make a big leap this year. Um, now, obviously, this oftentimes is the one time a year you guys get to talk to certain people in the program, be it coordinators, yeah. be it players. Um, is there anybody in particular you're really looking forward to, to hearing from this training camp? Well, I don't believe we're allowed any coaches in camp. I think it's only spring okay. ball, and that's pretty okay. much it. And we'll see. You in, it's Kirk Schrock, actually, made that's, that joke. That's and he's only, he's only been here for six months, or <laughs> maybe less than that. But he, he made that joke back in spring. He's like, all right, see you guys next year. And it's like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> and he's not wrong. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely getting Gavin today, so we'll get to talk to him. Oh, <laughs> cool. Talk to him about uh, everything, basically, from being named quarterback one to new offense, new offensive coordinator. I guess your third OC technically in three years, if you want to count nuns. I don't know if you count that. Um, yeah, I guess you do. Injury update, I guess, on him. We'll kind of just be like, hey, like we obviously you got injured last year. How are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. It's it's just it's going to be a lot of softball questions, in my opinion, because I just don't think we get to talk to him that often, and there's really not much he's going to say, regardless. So. Um, I do know we get Gavin. We're going to get two other players. Um, those have not been named yet, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to be uh, bigger name players, whether it be captains in Langan or Aaron Lewis. or I think a lot of people want to talk to Aaron Lewis just because yeah. of uh, his, his whole media day. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't even know what to call it. His, his coming out party at media day, breaking out yeah. performance. I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, we'll call it performance. That's that's pretty good. He, uh, he he just was very talkative and he was good at it too. Um, guy loves the camera. Can't can't knock that. So I might have to make that one a video interview just for fun. Um, yeah, he's he's got a great story too. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. tragically lost his mom this past year, but I mean, that's the reason that he came back to Rutgers was to be close mm-hmm. to her because she was sick. Um, mm-hmm. So I know that there's going to be stories throughout the summer that reference that, and so I just kind of wanted to prepare everybody for that. Yeah, so maybe we'll get him. I don't know who else is going to be out there and available, but uh, we're also – I mean, you can't say a lot about practice, which sucks, but it, it does help us with our writing and all that a little bit in terms of uh, just understanding what's going on and getting a little bit insider info in the program. And anything we can post and will post will be on our message board. So if, if you're not on there, definitely keep an eye out. Um, check that out nonstop. We're going to have content on content on content. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it's only one day this week, and then it goes back to – I think it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this is just day one. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it. There's not really much else to say. It's just kind of, uh, I guess the biggest thing coming out today would be the, the new roster. You get to see the weights, yeah. the gains. and All the new numbers. Losses. Yeah, that's Who's it. changed positions, blah, blah, blah. We always see a wide receiver, DB, flip-flop, so I'm sure we're going to see it again. I don't know yep. who it will be, but um, maybe Makwa. Probably not because he's been making some moves over on defense, but. Who knows? Yeah, and I also think while you can't report certain things, you can <clears> – <throat> Greg does do a daily uh, press briefing, right, or at least like a weekly one. A weekly, yeah. It's a weekly one. I, I would say this to people. Be very mindful of the questions that are asked because usually they are <clears throat> asked for a reason, Yeah, if that makes sense. So, That's... Rich, you might see a player flashing, let's say a wide receiver, and he's flashed mm-hmm. three practices in a row. Your question to Greg might be, hey, Greg, is there anybody on the skill positions, like maybe any young guys that have really impressed you so far in camp? Yeah. And if he says something, then you can report on it. If he doesn't, exactly. he said, eh, it's, it's still early. That's probably what he will say. It's still mm-hmm. early. A couple of these guys, you know, they had flashes, but, you know, we're two pl- practices in. So just be mindful of the questions that are asked because usually they're being asked for a reason, guys. Yeah. Pretty much. And then you can be like, you know, hey, Greg, uh, what did you see out of Jaquay Jackson today? And it's like, hint, hint, hint. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He looked really fucking good. <laughs> um, yep. So, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how he, go, he looks. I'm more intrigued by him than I want to say probably anyone else on the team because if he's a legit wide receiver one, that makes the total difference for this offense. So Absolutely. So we'll have a lot more about uh, football camp in the subsequent days and weeks. But uh, kicks off today, so get excited because football season is about a month away. Uh, Rutgers has opening day on Sunday the 3rd, I believe. Um, 
Sunday yes, the Sunday the third. Yeah. Sixth. Seven, yeah, Sunday the third. Uh yeah, Labor Day right. weekend. Woohoo. All right. So we're exactly a month away. Um there has been a bit of basketball news uh, the last few days. Let's start with the uh, Jamal Mulvaney, I mean, the Paul Mulcahy uh, drama. Um, as some of you may or may not know, uh, the there fuck? has been, there's been some online scuttlebutt. Uh, anybody who follows the college fact. transfer scene knows who Trilly Donovan is. Trilly Donovan <laughs> commented on it. He, he put it out there that there's mm -hmm. transfers not really happy to his new destination, Pacific Northwest. Um, he then later revealed that it was Paul. Um, so what are you hearing about this situation? Is he's there any Jamal. chance? He didn't say Paul. <laughs> yeah, he did say Jamal, but it, it's, Jamal it is the player he is talking about is Paul Mulcahy. <clears throat> what are you hearing about this situation? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not pretty. I mean, guess it's pretty well known at this point. It's, he wanted to come back. He tried to come back. They kind of said, like, sorry, but not sorry. Like, you kind of you screwed us. <laughs> you left yeah. in June. Like, yep. no, we're, we have our, our rosters filled. Like, technically, if you want to get real technical here, there's zero scholarships left because Austin yep. Williams is going to be a Scarlet Knight. Oscar Palmquist is going to be a Scarlet Knight again. And that's just a matter of paperwork at this point, more more so for Oscar because Austin's still working out with the, the grades and the class and this and that and all that nonsense. Um, but I expect both to be Scarlet Knights, and that's 13. It's not like Pike has an extra yep. ship to give. And yep. once you kind of said, like, hey, I'm going in the portal, Pike was like, all right, well, I'm going to go find some guards. Found Austin Williams, found Jeremiah Williams, and got Palmquist back, who's a solid forward. Now, most of you are saying on the boards and on Twitter, um, hey, like, why would we take Palmquist and not uh, Mulcahy? Well, number one, Mulcahy screwed you. Number two, you yep. added two guards. Number three, Palmquist is a totally different position and yep. a position that you really need help at right now because, <clears throat> Mag, whether you believe it or not, I know people have went based off one quote from Pike, which was apparently just like a conver side conversation with Zagoria, and also based off uh, some tweets. Mag will not be healthy game one, or he won't be ready to go yep. game one. I'm hearing Ogbo might not be ready to go game one either. <clears throat> so they might not even be ready to go uh, game two or three. So you got to give him some time. Like these guys are still coming off an injury. Mag's more significant than Ogbo's, but they still have to recover. And Mag on and from his perspective too, it's not just the recovery; it's also like a mental thing because once you tear your ACL, it it, it fucking hurts. So you got to yeah. be able to get back into it and get back into the group of things. So it's definitely not easy. Um, but regardless, going back to the Paul thing, I mean, he tried to come back, and they said they they talked about it. They said basically, yeah, we're good. Like you kind of screwed us, and that makes sense too because their new offense doesn't it features quick. Uh, shifty guards. It doesn't feature a six foot seven guard that takes the ball up the court slow as molasses. Yeah, like, I'm not being yep. mean, but you're you're not a point guard anymore. You got to adapt into a new role. Yep. So yeah, he's 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 got he's got a good handle. Let's, let's we're not trying to say that he can't handle no, the ball. No, he can. It's, just it's more slow. about just like you said, pacing. Like Rutgers wants to play at a higher pace this year, and you kind of see that from who they've taken in. Like, look how different the offense looked last year when Derek Simpson was the lead guard, when he was slashing and cutting and kicking it out. So I think that's what they they have kind of dedicated themselves to last this year. And I, was, I forget who I was talking about this too, but when you think of, like, Rutgers having that 65-mile-an-hour speed limit meme mm -hmm. that they would put around, you got to wonder how much of that's actually from Rutgers' great defense, which is a huge part of it, and how much yeah. of that is Rutgers playing at a very slow pace on offense. So if ultimately, your defensive metrics might look really good, but since you play at a high pace, your def your your opponent's going to have more offensive possessions and it's going to score more points. That's yeah. just inevitable. If you give your opponents less possessions, they're going to score less points mm -hmm. on the whole, in general. Yeah, that, so, I mean, go on. Sorry. No, no, that, that was going to. They they finished two hundred sixty fourth in tempo, and that's per Ken Palm. Like that's that's rough. That's not mm -hmm. quick at all, and. With today's game, like you saw it, and I'm going to use this as an example because I, I got to see it up close and personal, but the Penn State basketball team last year, you see how quick they were and just, just chucked. I mean, yeah, they chucked a lot, but they were also mm -hmm. quick as hell, and they made a run in the tournament. They made a run in the Big Ten tournament. They made the finals yep. in the Big Ten tournament. Yep. And you need to up the pace. That's the new age game. Like, you have to – you can't be slow anymore. You can't – Yep. this is where the Big Ten is going to start adapting, I think, and this is where Pike needs to adapt too because – Next year's roster could feature a couple superstars, and I'll tell you right now, they're not going fucking slow. They're going up no. and down the court like yep. as quick as possible. So, 
I think this makes a lot of sense just to tell uh, Jamal Mulvaney kind of go screw. We're, we're good. Um, <laughs> yep. And that's, I'm, I'm sorry, but you, you shouldn't have left in June. You kind of like, yeah. yeah, people are, someone said they're like, how is this not different than Cam's? And I'm like, well, Cam left in May. Cam was only here for a year. Paul was supposed to be the guy to take the culture. Like that was it. It was like the culture changers. Remember it was Gio, yep. Ron, uh, I think even Jacob, uh, Caleb. Montez, Caleb, that whole group was the culture changers. And that was supposed to change the culture completely. And then, Paul, you're like year five. You're like, yeah, I'm New Jersey's point guard, but now I want to go mid for number one, Midwest. Like you made a stupid decision to do that. Oh, Northwest. It's not Midwest. North, Northwest. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm completely losing it. Um, and I'm on a coffee, uh, cleanse. So I'm like, oh, no, no coffee. So I'm struggling right now. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to the Pacific Northwest. You kind of got to know, like the fact that the coach has to tell you on your recruiting visit that we'll buy you a flight home whenever you want kind of tells me you probably don't want to be out there yeah and you know part of that's why he didn't want to be there it sounds like that what they told him he was getting into wasn't fully uh reality and so i, I do feel bad for him in that sense but it's Dining. business like these these kids approach it like i'm making a business decision and i respect that but they also have to respect that the schools have to also act like a business. They have to yeah. move on. They can't just like hold that spot open and hope that you come back. Like that's just not realistic. So I do feel bad for him in a sense, but in another Rutgers moved on, he moved on. It is what it is. That's, that's it. You kind of just got to say, uh, screw it. And on to the next one. And I really, if you watch this, uh, this backcourt this year, I don't think you're going to be complaining at all whatsoever. I think you're going to be like, wow, this is, this is basketball. Why is it so quick? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, <clears throat> but speaking of leaving and coming back, uh, on the other side of the coin, it sounds like Rutgers is going to get Oscar Palmquist back. Um, mm -hmm. This has been reported. He transferred. He entered the transfer portal in May, in March. I'm sorry, like right, basically in the the opening days of the window opening. Yeah. Ends up at Elon after taking a few visits. I think he took a visit to like North Dakota or some uh, random Montana. Montana. Yeah. He ended up at Elon and he entered re-entered the portal, I want to say a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And from our understanding, from the reporting that we've done and the sources we've spoken to, he basically entered the portal again in with the express intent to come back to Rutgers. Is is that kind of what you're hearing as well? Yeah, I thought the, the best way to put it was someone someone on our board said running did he run back to the portal and it like are you in caps and I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, he ran back to the portal. Like that's yes, <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Uh -huh. So it sounds like he's gonna be back. It's just a matter of paperwork at this point. Um once they get that all situated, I think he'll be a Scarlet Knight once again. And it kinda goes to show the culture that Pykel's kinda instilled as well in these guys. Um or just overall that they, they go to the portal and if they get the opportunity to come back I'm not going to say he was pushed out, but if they get the opportunity to come back, he, he's coming back in a heartbeat. He loved Rutgers. Yep. Everyone, everyone loved Palmquist at Rutgers, by the way. Not just like the, the old guys, but Gio, Ron, Caleb, etc. Loved hanging out with him. I don't know if you remember, Oscar also hung out at uh, the Harper's household during the whole COVID thing yep. because he wasn't allowed to go back overseas and this and that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's everyone loved Oscar. He's a great team player, and he wasn't really bad that last season. Like He, he, has a, he fills a role. You need a four-man until Mag gets back. Could it be Hyatt? Eh, could be, but I think he's better as off the bench, in my opinion, as one of the uh, three, four guys to come off the bench. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, you, you get a starter for maybe two, three games until Mag's really good, maybe longer if need be, and he can hit the three. And that's, I mean, you need three-point shooting. It's, there's no secret there. I think that's been the struggle for the past three or four years, and um, now you get a good three-point shooter too, so. I think this is a good addition. I think it will, will be a great addition. Um, and it, it fills a need. Like, this is why Pike's, Pike's kind of going out on a limb now. And, and his 13th scholarship is usually saved for – I know it says 13th. It's really not 13th. He's probably like the eighth, ninth man in the rotation. But this is just going to show you, like, Pike's doing whatever it can to put this roster together for this year and just kind of prep it for next year. Now, Palmquist has two years, so I don't know how that's going to play gonna into effect. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how that's going to play into effect. But I would assume he's probably just going to be like, all right, I did my five years or six years or whatever it is at this point. And just like, all right, I'm done. Because he was very hey. close to going back to Sweden, I was told, before transferring to Elon and just saying, like, hey, I want to go back to Sweden. Done. That's it. So I could, I could see him at this point just being like, hey, that was scary. I went out there. It definitely isn't what Rutgers was. So I'm going to stay yeah. here as long as I can. And 
who wouldn't want to be on that ride? Unless he, I don't cool. think he's got a big payday waiting for him. Like, but 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 the twenty four twenty five season, like he he would be a valuable member of that team. Like you said, he he already knows Dylan re- really well. If assuming Dylan ends up at Rutgers, which is seeming more and more likely, we'll we'll cover that later. But mm-hmm. who wouldn't want to play on that team? Oh, I agree. You with you. It's just more so scholarship numbers. Like if. if Sorry, Oscar, but if someone wants to come on and they're like a four star or a transfer, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah that's fair. That, that's definitely fair. Um, speaking of the last member of the 23 24 season, uh, what are we hearing about the Austin Williams situation? I know that he had a course that he was finishing up at FIU. Uh, it sounds, from what we understand, that the academic calendar for FIU has come and gone. Is this just like he might just show up and be on the team? I mean, that, so faculty had to submit grades last night by 11.59 p.m., it says, for summer B mm-hmm. and C. It says summer B slash C grades will be available for students starting today. So okay, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe a day later. Who knows? But um, I think they're going to definitely uh, announce something very shortly. I don't know exactly when, so – um, the fact that grades are available today, maybe he didn't even wake up yet and he didn't check his grades. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he passed. I wouldn't be, sh- I'd be shocked if he didn't. I was told he was doing phenomenal in the class. So it's just more of a matter of him passing that class. And then I don't know if you wait until like transfers, credits and transcripts and et cetera. And he's, he's a seventh year guy. Like he's gotta be close to graduating at this point. Right. Like, he's gotta be. Yeah. If not already. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of, uh, logistics at this point between him and Oscar and then you'll get both. Uh, relatively shortly. Yeah, so that's uh, something definitely to, to keep an eye on. I, 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 from what I've understood, he's been on campus again since he visited um, <clears throat> for administrative reasons. So I, I do think it's all but a, a guarantee he ends up on the team, assuming that uh, he doesn't have a, a rogue professor that gives him a, a grade he doesn't deserve. Um, that would be something. <laughs> which I, I don't think will happen. But uh, FIU professor hates on Rutgers, so gives them yeah, an F. <laughs> FIU, more like FIU. Uh, FIU Rutgers. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we mentioned uh, more about Dylan. Um, last night, he kind of lit the, the Twitter world ablaze and the oh, social yeah, media dude. world ablaze. Uh, he posted to his Instagram story. Uh, I forget what the exact quote was. Let me pull that up before I say anything. All right. So you posted on his Instagram story. If you know how to make a commitment edit, swipe up and swipe up for the olds in the, the crowd or it means to message me about it. Um, the older in the crowd. <laughs> the olds in the crowd. That's fair. That's, so that's fair. So he put that out there. We've been hearing for a while. It's a, a heavy Rutgers lean. He, they're, the, the, Har- the Harpers are keeping this very close to the vest. It, for all we know, he could announce this weekend, but this has to be a good sign. He removed his top five posts from his in- Instagram as well. Hmm. Are you hearing anything about an additional timeline, or is this just? Do you think so, is this trolling? Is this? Let's, let's talk us through this. I mean, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely trolling to an extent because, like, you're the number one kid in the country. You act like you don't have people that can make a commitment at it in seconds. <laughs> if you messaged any recruiting service, whether it be Rivals or one of those other weirdos, and, and asked them for a commitment at it, they, they would give you one within, like, seconds. They'd be like, oh, right, you give yeah. us, like, 20 minutes. Like, we got you. When do you need it, Bob? Yeah. Like, and then you just go out on a limb and say, like, any of these other editors that have, like, I don't even know. There's, there's like, Steezo God. There's this. There's that. There's recruit graphics. Like just go to any one of those guys and they'll also get you a graphic within 20 minutes. Yep. Like it's, it's not crazy. So yeah, I think this is more so Dylan saying like, Hey, things are coming to a close. Like I'm about to commit soon. You guys kind of, here's, here's the news. I'm breaking it to you. So no one else breaks it. And from what we've been told, it's going to happen before his senior year of high school. If I recall correctly, I believe senior year of high school basketball usually starts senior year of high school basketball, not senior year of high school. Sorry. Um, usually starts around Thanksgiving time. So you probably have anywhere between now and um, two months, three months, whatever it is. Uh, I forget when it started last year, but it's, it's around that time. Um, and you'll, you'll get a decision relatively soonish. This is, it's coming down to it now. So 
it's uh we're gonna wait and see what happens it's gonna be um an interesting couple of uh couple of months but it sounds like it's still Rutgers all the way and I've, I've talked to multiple people more recently uh I talked to someone this past month who's told me like they're very confident so we're just gonna wait and see I'm very confident in my future cast I've talked to coaches behind the scenes not just obviously at Rutgers but not just at Rutgers other other schools and everyone keeps saying it's still in the Rutgers still in the Rutgers still in the Rutgers and Duke's kind of like backed off already it was always Rutgers or Duke and Duke's back off so We'll wait and see what happens here, but it sounds like the Scarlet Knights <laughs> might have one and two in the 2024 class. Mind you, that might not stay, but that's <laughs> one and two. Yeah, that's not not a bad not a bad class by any means, and that probably would be good enough for the number one class, especially with uh, with North Carolina's Elliot Kudo recently reclassifying. Um, I can't imagine Rutgers not having the number one class with with the four guys they have would have committed in that. Um, even if they do lose one and two, if it's two and three, it's still going to be the number one class. Mostly. Yeah, pending. I mean, Boozer also reclassing and Cooper Fag, and, and then it gets a little messy. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard, that they, for whatever reason, Cooper Flag and the Boozers uh, feel better about spacing themselves out in terms <laughs> of uh, not playing together. From what I've read on the Duke boards, but okay. who knows? I mean, that's fine by me. Um, one last thing I have. Uh, yesterday, uh, Under Armour announced its Elite 24 rosters, and that's just a yes. summer a, – it's not an AU. It's a summer high school basketball showcase all-star game. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they call it Elite 24 because it's the 24 best uh, in their eyes, men's and women's uh, high school basketball players uh, from the class of you know the high school seniors. So Dylan got named that. You know who else got named to it? Ace Bailey. Ace Bailey, baby, and they're going to be on the same team. They're both playing for Team Future. Uh, this game is going to be played in Atlanta, Georgia on August 12th. I believe mm -hmm. August 12th is a Friday. Um, no, it's a Saturday. So they'll be playing together <laughs> on Saturday, August 12th. I don't have any information about where it's going to be broadcast. That's going to be either on TV or streamed on Twitch. Stream, so probably. once, I'd once we figure out where that is, we'll, we'll make sure you guys have that information, but just another uh, another opportunity for those two to be teammates on the court together. I mean, hear me out. <laughs> it's all adding up. <laughs> it all makes a lot of sense. 2024 mm -hmm. is going to be a wild ride for Rutgers Athletics overall. And I'm not just saying hoops. Like, definitely hoops is going to be the, the driving force behind that. But it's it's going to be absolutely insane. Whether it be football on the rise, maybe they get a bowl game this year and build on that basketball maybe a final four appearance <laughs> uh maybe jumping the gun a little bit there but it is what it is like um, um it's it's here this is it for Rutgers. and jersey mike's arena is getting a nice little brand new fucking branding right in the front too and back yeah it looks way better than the, the fat heads they slapped on the side of the building last year it's actually like raised lettering yeah it's kind of it, i mean it, it just looks like if we're being real it just looks like the signage that you'd have like, but super size for a Jersey Mike's. So the yeah. light up lights. Um, it looks better than that, though. Like I said, but it, it does does look better than just a sign slapped on there. Yeah, I mean, uh, shout out to Fonseca for popping that one up on Twitter. I don't know what mm -hmm. I gotta find out from him what made him just randomly drive by the rack. But I guess I don't He's know, tipped off. Sometimes you're yeah. bad. Maybe Jersey Mike's tipping <laughs> off. It might be all right. No, yeah, it makes sense. But uh, yeah, it's, it is definitely some cool branding. And then uh. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, basketball is coming up. Football is right here, and uh, we're just waiting for some Big Ten expansion news, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, the expansion stuff has been wild. Um, for those who haven't been paying attention, Colorado recently announced they're leaving the Pac-12 for the Big Twelve. Whatever. I don't know, I, the Big whole 12, like having yeah. numbers, yeah, in their in their name seems like absurd at this point. Uh, from the Big Ten to the Pac-12, blah blah blah, um, but. Yeah. What else? Uh, is there anything else you wanted to hit on before we sign off here? Um, no. I mean, actually, one thing. Nigel James, who Rutgers offered back in June, and also I think hosted him on a visit in June too, uh, is reclassifying. Not reclassifying. He's leaving his school up in Massachusetts at Cushing Academy, and now will be at Long Island Lutheran. So he's a little bit closer to Rutgers now. Um, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, they're he's a big fan of. Uh, the Scarlet Knights and vice versa. They've done a really good job early on with him. And I know I'm talking 2025 and we didn't even finish 2024, but that's kind of how this thing works now. So 
They also hosted two uh, two unofficial visitors in uh, Kelvin o- Odi Odi Oda something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Warren Keel, they both walked away with offers, both Massachusetts guys, both Mass Rivals guys, which is an AAU program, which is sponsored by Adidas, which we still haven't seen a contract from. Very annoying, but whatever. We kind of know it's already Adidas. Um, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Oh, and uh, Arizona has a Board of Regents meeting today for the Big 12, so more than likely the Big 12. It says athletics, mm-hmm. really. Um. I forgot one thing. Yesterday, the uh, two out-of-conference games for Rutgers basketball went on sale. The the two uh, games that are being played off-site, uh, the Princeton game for November 6th and the Mississippi State uh, for December 23rd. So obviously, that one's at the Rock. The Princeton game's in Trenton. Uh, tickets are available, I believe, to season ticket holders right now. They'll be available to the general public shortly. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's paint both those buildings red. Or Scarlet, I guess you could say. From what I was told, that uh, season opener versus Princeton has been – there's not many tickets left. left. Like, this is going to be wow. a, a crazy game. And I know print, people think Princeton, they probably don't think they have a big, like, fan base. But they have a pretty good base. So Yeah. I mean, we're, they're we're also waiting. coming off as, you know, one of the best seasons in program history. So they're going to yeah. – they're, they're riding high. Uh, they kept their – their coaching staff intact this offseason somehow. Obviously, yeah. Brett McConnell was mentioned by almost everybody uh, for yeah. assistant coaching roles, and he had a few head coaching role offers yeah. he turned down. So it'll be a good game. Yeah, I think Rutgers pulls away, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens there. we got some time till uh, November 6th, but it's it's not too far around the corner. No, it's not. So. All right, guys. Well, thank you once again uh, for listening. Thanks to everyone who's rated and reviewed and subscribed and all that jazz. We've, we've kind of berated you guys about it almost every episode, but we do really again. do appreciate. Yeah, we really do appreciate you guys who have. And for those who haven't, uh, I'm going to get that shame bell soon, and I'm going to ring it, <laughs> and you're going to feel it. I know you're going to feel it right here. Um, but for me and Richie, Jeez. this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off.